Hey there, boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today, Duff Dog and I are going to see if we can't get a 1984 Nissan pickup running. That's right. We're doing a foreign truck. made a bad decision. That's right. We're jumping in the pudding game. We got ourselves a Nissan here, which is basically a Datsun. So this here is an 84 Nissan two-wheel drive. I know nothing about it. One owner, been off the road since 08. We're at a farm auction here. We couldn't afford any of the square bodies or the Peterbilt cab overs or the Capitiller. So this is what we got. Ooh, look, turbine wheels. Squirrel! Squirrel! The widow said she bought this thing brand new. Because she rolled it over once. I don't know if that's where these dents come from or they're in the door or what, but I guess they had it running a couple years ago, so either we got lied to or this thing's gonna run again. So let's get her drug out of here and on the trailer. Carry on with our life. Comes the spare wheel. Oh, look at all these goose heads. Oh. Nice auction folks threw some trash in there for us. Came with the radio and the owner's manual and the keys and Bluetooth floorboards. What is it? Five speed? Heck yeah. Oh wait, no it is a five speed. How many miles? 173.52. Hot dang, this is probably like the highest mileage thing we've had. 170,000 rounds. Spare fuel filter. I'm pretty sure somebody was using that as a pipe or plan to, they just haven't yet. Glass fuses, those were the days. What's it say on the pen? Valley City State, courtesy of Farmers Merchants Bank. Oh, this floorboard's equally off. Oh my gosh. Hey, another pen. Oh. She's on the floor. It's got a little four cylinder in it. I like the color. Pudding seems to get views on these things, so we'll give it a shot. Winter fresh, dang. Is it a winter? Remember when these things used to have like codes and stuff in it? Sure enough, it's got a code. <sighs> oh, that tastes terrible. Yeah, buy one 20 ounce, get one free, mellow yellow, score. What year is that from? Redeemed by 11-11-2002, missed out. Is that guy giving me the finger? Let's get this thing yanked out. You follow me. All right, loading went pretty well. It's Get the daisy here home. What do you think of this thing, Duff? You weren't at the sale. Oh, he clearly does not approve. So, got this thing home from the farm sale. The mud sluts on the pickup have destroyed yet another headlight. Seems like it's always on that side of the vehicle. Driver's side. Great. Maybe I should get some mud flaps. So it's a hybrid. She's uh, got a little moss growing there. Got some lichens growing all over the hood. This thing should clean up. I think we're gonna call it sunny because dot sun, it's yellow. I don't know. Been off the road for 13 years. The valance is pretty hooied up, but it's got a valance. Got all the tires holding air. Did have to tube that one. 
It's the Ameristar 300 SL, white lines out, you know, because when you're a mini trucker, that's what you do. You got to have the white lines out. We don't have the Daytons, but beggars can't be choosers. Bumper's a little tweaked. Uh, may hook the winch on that. No big deal. Inner fender looks like she's about to exit stage left. Chrome emblems, they're still good. Maybe we could, we should, should we do a giveaway on that thing? I don't know. We'll think about it. We'll see how this last giveaway has went. For those of you who don't know, in the 86 C10 daily driver video, we are taking applications for a drawing. If you buy a decal pack, you get a four pack for 10 bucks, you gotta email me, and then you gotta buy the decals through me, and you'll get your name in a drawing for a license plate from that pickup, and we'll throw you some stickers and autograph, maybe some other cool stuff, so. Hit me up if you need decal packs. You know what? Let's do another giveaway on this thing. Anybody who buys a decal for the next three weeks, whenever this comes out, channel put it down below, you get your name in a drawing for this uh, Nissan emblem and maybe some other goodies. If you buy them now, we'll put you in the drawing for the license plate for that pickup and for this. So double whammy, you get your name in two drawings. I want that, all you gotta do is buy some decals. Mirror ain't busted. She said they rolled it over, but I mean, it's got a couple of hooies in there. It doesn't look like it was rolled. Very hard, must have been in the snow. Ooh. Door hinges are shot for the pins. Look at that seat though. Duff, check this thing out. It's too good for you. I don't know what happened to the shift boot. If somebody put it on backwards or just blow it out or... It don't really line up. Maybe that was part of the rollover. Somebody clearly put a sweet stereo on it and took that tape deck out. Yeah, floors are, are something. Anything behind the seat? Come on, big money, no whammy. Anything good? Oh, we definitely need these around the, sh oh, she she's, needs recharging. Dang it. Seven A's, drop forge China. Some shotgun shells. That one looks, Ready to burst. 12 gauge. Oh boy. This thing's a hunting machine. 308 Winchester. More tools. Oh, that's the uh, spare tire spinner downer thinger. Uh, battery cable adapter. Oh, the world's tiniest fly swatter. How are you going to kill a fly with that? That's for like people who hold their pinky out when they drink their beer. Tire iron. Oh, how would you get that out of there if you needed to? Probably all kinds of good junk under the seat there. A whole carton of Marlboros. OJ glove, of course. Spare fan belt. Clearly with all the shells inside, this thing was a hunting rig. Is that the passenger door handle? Duff, check it out. What do you think? What do you think? You wanna go for a ride? Duff is not a fan of the Nissan. Well, hey, hey, he's gonna check her out. What do you think? You know, do you like it? Just a little bit? Not at all. Not at all. Um, we got tie downs on the side. If you're into using rope, you know, you just tie it around that. Just like the ropes at the dock. I mean, come on. These guys that are all figured out. What was this for, your, your fishing poles? Or for goose head storage? Some blue smoothies back here. Class A fire control concentrate. This is like the best purchase ever. It's like they know that we light ourselves on fire on a regular basis. Here's another reason I wanted to call it sunny. I think it said Dotson right there. So now it just says sun. That blinker is blown out and that taillight's blown out. But between the two, you know, we got a good combination. Neither of the backup lights is blown out. Is that the bump stop? Is that where the bumper's supposed to come through? The original bumper? Is there that, those holes? Oh. Chrome step bumper. Oh, it's the tailgate handle that's in there. Oh, son of a biscuit. We're never gonna find a replacement for one of them. If we get it running, we're gonna find out uh, if that muffler's off this thing. Can of gold spray paint, I'm sure. That's the best for huffing, so I've heard, allegedly. 
Well, who in that cab corner? She's got some rot. They were all about the plastic chrome stuff. How do you suppose the fuel tank smells duffel up, I guess? Come check her out. I can't smell nothing. What do you think? That's never gonna latch again. She probably was rolled. You can see some flexage going on on the cab. Is that a word, Duff? Flexage? Which floor pan is worse? Ooh. 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 Uh. I think that's a body mount there, and it's not even attached. The only thing it's holding is a rocker. Winter fresh, more shotgun shells. Maybe with the goose decoy heads in the back and all the shotgun shells, call this thing the rubber ducky, like Finnegan's Firebird Camaro thinger he's got. What do you guys think? Comment down below. Sunny, rubber ducky, old yeller, sunshine. So many options. And there it is. No way! It's one of the dual spark plug engines. I think there's eight points on that cap. One, two, there's way more than four, so we're gonna assume that there's eight spark plugs. Let me just prop this foot up with this prop rod that's supposed to be attached to something, but that's not gonna fall on our head several times over the course of this whole shenanigan. There you go. Just so you know, it's a 2.4 and it's a, a 720 model. They uh, clearly wrote it on the firewall, so you know. Coolant? Yep. Dipstick, Jimmy. I mean, are you even supposed to check oil on this thing? Where where would you be? Oh, way in the back here, little tiny guy. It's black, and it's on there, so got a lot of extra stuff here. Two coils, too, then? Oh, yeah. It even says up on them, so you know which way to install them. That's wild. 2.4, so it's the big one. I think you could get them with a 2 liter or 2.4 gas, and I think they made like a 2.4 diesel as well. Either way, it's the big dog gasser. Nissan Motor Company on the oil cap. Nissan on the whatever that thing is. Two battery cables. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that goofy connector thinger that they got going on for the positive i think the keys were in it weren't they duff oh yeah i think the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get the fuel line unhooked from the carburetor so we don't pump up any nasty fuel and see if this thing turns over and if we got spark it should have spark though i'm guessing it's high energy ignition it's got two coils it's got twice as much crap to go wrong Well, it looks like the mice chewed on the air filter a little bit and made a little nest in there. Take an act of Congress to get this thing off of here. For cheese and rice. I hate these old wire style clamps. Maybe they're better on Nissans. I mean, do you not have somebody in town that drives around in their pajamas on their lawnmower to go up and get groceries? He's not a wank though, he always carries an extra tank of fuel. Oh, he's got a heated seat cover on that thing. The winter's coming. Or is that just unclipped there? Oh my gosh, for vacuum hoses and such. Oh, I didn't need to take that off? Oh, you're telling me? Oh, for Pete's sake. Oh. Look at all these vacuum lines. It's like spaghetti under here. I'm sure the mice didn't chew on any of those. Well, half of them aren't even hooked up. Oh, which one is the fuel inlet? Oh, man. I just want to pull them off, Greta, but I don't know what any of them do. Half of them are off already. That looks like the biggest line. Where does that go? Oh, they're off on the intake. It's going to take... A whole toolbox worth of plugs to cap all these. Oh, so there's two plugs here, two plugs here, two here. One there? What? Oh, this is the strangest dang thing ever. So here's our distributor cap. We got two spark plugs here, two here, two here, one here, one here. So this one and this front one must be for the front cylinder. This next one and this one are for two. This one 
and this one are for three, and this one, and this one are for four. Weird. Oh yeah, just freed up a bunch of horsepower there. And they're different number spark plugs. Intake side is BPR 6ES, exhaust side is BPR 5ES. So you mean to tell me I got eight plugs in a four cylinder and you're gonna give me two different part numbers? What are the odds that these have the correct part number on both sides? I'd say it's less than 50-50. Let's see, let's see if we can get a boot off. Yeah, but I can't see. We're not taking it out. All right. I need to figure out where the fuel inlet is. It's gotta be this. Always right here. So let's take that off. This is not going well. Where's the fuel pump? I was wrong, I did some looking online. It was a 2.5 diesel. Yeah, the big dog. Also, this thing doesn't have a mechanical fuel pump. It's got an electric inline, it appears, so. I got some rubber lines down here that I'm just gonna unhook those, because I can't get that line off the fuel. Carburetor, inlet, what you call it. I'm sure these are gonna go just swimmingly too. There we go. So I unhooked these two fuel lines, a large one and a small one. I presume the large one is the pressure and the small one is returned. So now we're not pumping any varnish fuel up into the carbonator. And look at how these clamps come apart. You just take that piece out. Get one yourself one of these Capri magnetic bowls. They're kind of got a dish so you can set them at an angle like that. It keeps your stuff in them. Napa Todd shows me these. Capri, isn't that the kind of pants that Iowa Classic Car Ryans? Oh no, they're khakis. He probably wears those Capri style ones too. Back to work. Let's throw a battery in this thing and uh, see if she cranks over. While I was down there, I did notice a lot of the wiring is pretty crappily taped up and sketchy and uh, that's bare wire, but I think that's a temp or an oil pressure sender down there. Maybe it was crappily taped up from the factory. Who knows? Wouldn't surprise me. A lot of electrical tape. Thanks to Florida man Dave for being our battery sponsor this week. I'm guessing this DT78 is going to be way too big of a battery for this thing, but I'm going to make it fit. All right. No buzzing even? Let's turn the key on. Let's see what cranks. He's a beeper. <laughs> Well, let's give it a tickle the hot sauce, see what happens. A little's good, a lot's better. Slingshot engaged. Slingshot engaged. <laughs> I knew this thing would cackle right off. That's why Puddin' does these, because they're just so easy. Maybe that's what we should call this thing, easy peasy. Lemon squeezy, or just shorten it up to EPLS, or just lemon squeezy? Lemon drop? If you haven't commented a name, you should get one down below because there's a lot of good ones. Try number two. You still don't look impressed. You better do good donuts or you want nothing to do with it? Okay. We know we're gonna have some vacuum leaks, but we'll address that once we get her topped off, fired up. So I know it's got an inline fuel pump and I guess I don't hear that running. We're gonna get it up in the air, see if we can find where that fuel pump's at and if it's working. We should also check the tank, see how bad that looks inside. So let's get the old endoscope out, see what we can find. Oh, the schlong, it's always a two-handed job here. So long all right past the magical flap that nobody siphons through anti-siphon oh looking pretty good we're still in the neck i'm caught on a ridge of rust and other goodness 
Well, you know what's going to happen? We're not going to be able to fish this thing out of there from that anti-siphon. Oh, yeah. That tank looks good. Right, Duff? Not bad at all. So since the bottom of that tank isn't all rusty, a little bit of white scuzz, but we ain't worried about that. I think we're going to see if we can get juice to that pump or if that pump's pumping. We're going to try putting some petrol in there and see if we can get this tank to work. There goes lawnmower man, full load of groceries. It's like we're in Florida, but we're not. Back to Nissan things. Before Duff gets mad and pees on it. So here's our fuel tank. This thing is huge, in my opinion. And it's got a drain plug, so we could pull that out. But I think it's... I think we'll just leave it. Because it looked really empty. And my luck, I would pull that out and it would never seal up. Also found out why the muffler is in the bed. It's not where it's supposed to be. She's uh, straight piped. And she's got a little restriction up here, it appears. Why do the mice always nest in the clutches? Dang it. Are you itchy or what? You got the lice? Hope not. It's got a box frame on it though. But you could really haul some heavy loads with that box frame. Send it over some jumps. You ever take it off any sweet jumps? What do you think, Duffskies? I gotta win you over on this thing, I know. I did, I did push the clutch pedal and that's not working, so we're probably gonna have to bleed that at a minimum. I'm guessing this is the fuel pump, you know, cause that's where a scotch lock belongs. Sweet. Oh, they ran a second wire back to run the fuel pump. Awesome. Well, I guess we should probably take that apart. See if we can't put an inline pump in there. Maybe. We'll see what happens. That is a big, ugly cast iron pump. Maybe it's running. I doubt it. Duff, go turn the key on. Got the key on. I can hear it humming. It'll just dump some fuel in it. It'll just miraculously pump fuel up there. And there'll be no issues whatsoever. Because Nissans are the greatest, right, Duff? You even have to hit it with a hammer. That's disappointing. I dumped fuel in. Now there's fuel running out on the ground. Why is that? Because there's a hole in the tank. Where's the hole at? Yep, right there. Oh, perfect. Boat tank it is. Should we try some seal all? Let's, let's huck some seal all at it. I think it's supposed to be dry to do it, but you guys ever tried the seal all? It's okay stuff for when you're in a pinch. I feel like we probably have to drain the tank. And this stuff is all dried up and shot. Yeah, we gotta drain the tank before we can try that stuff. So you see how the bottom of the fuel tank sits about here and the bottom of the fuel pump sits here and then the inlet to the fuel pump is slightly above that. You don't ever want your fuel pump to sit higher than your fuel tank. They're meant to push, not to pull. They'll just pull air. That's your worthless information today. We got our tank below for now. Let's go turn the key on, see what happens. Are you kidding me? Making another trip today? Couldn't get all his groceries in one shot. Oh, he's got his mask on this time. Safety first, kids. You can't make this stuff up. He's not a paid actor. Let's uh, turn the key on, see what happens. See if we get a geyser of fuel. Let's uh, put this pan over here. None of this fuel went in the floor drain. How dare you! I didn't park here on purpose either, Greta. Watch this key, gotta turn it like 480 degrees. Feels like it's running. Let's lift our fuel tank up so it's above it. Why you no pumpy? 
we're getting fuel to it definitely getting fuel there fuel pump shot good thing we got this bad boy we'll just uh, unhook that Place our wires onto here. Bada bing, bada boom. See how that works. Same bolt pattern, even. Close enough. I think it was meant to be. So basically, I just heat shrink soldered the old connector onto this whiz bang. Hepatitis fuel pump that I've been using for everything. So which side was in? The side with the fuel filter on it, I think. The long side? I think. There should be enough line here. So I think what we're gonna do is we're, since our tank is clearly leaking, we're just gonna set the boat tank in the box. We're just gonna hook up the outlet side on the pickup. Now we're just going to poke a hole through the bed, turn our fuel line down to here. Easy peasy. Oh, let's hook our connector up. Let's even loop that through there, you know, to hold it up from getting torn off by all the horsepowers coming off that right rear tire. Perfect. So we could fit it right through up there. Well, there's already a plug in the box. That's going to, that's going to fall through when I push this out. Bunch of dirt. Do we see daylight yet? Hello down below. Mower man, mower man, do whatever mower man can. Oh, mask off, just another load of groceries. Still rocking the pajamas, but it's only 9 a.m., so that's cool. I think that hole might be big enough to fit a fuel line through. Just maybe. Oh, we might have to take our most clampy clamp off of it. Blue smoothies, definitely will not be going to those. We need more hose, Jimmy. Hoppy mugs. Oh man, if these tarp strap hold downs were on the inside, we could even fasten that thing. I'm sure we could finger something out. Let's turn the key on, see if our clickety clack, clickety clacks, don't talk back. Oh yeah. Uh oh, I hear it getting angry. Are we getting fuel coming out the return yet? Should be coming out right there. Nothing. Where's the throttle linkage? There it is. Not getting any up here yet. What if we shim you up on a goose head? Four by four? Three by three. We can't be pumping it into the tank, are we? Why we no get fuel up here? Nothing. I'll stop you getting fuel or pump. We'll get that pump primed. No? I guess I've never had an issue, but maybe our clickety-clack doesn't like being mounted vertical. Maybe we gotta mount it horizontal. That should be easy enough. Just give her the old spinner ooski. Whoops, lost our scotch lock. But the rest of it. I don't think that's gonna matter, but that's about all I got for ideas. I guess maybe try blowing through the line. And it did sound a little restricted. Never seen that before. Can we just blow up the fuel lines on that C10 pickup like a week ago? Now let's try it. Oh yeah, we got fuel now. Must have just been some crap in that line. So now, gotta hook our feed back up. 
should get a hose clamp for that too. And it looks like on the return side, there's just a T right here in the inlet. So we could either eliminate that or we just cap it off down there. I think we'll just cap it off. Call it good. You don't need no stinking return. Or do you? Is it going to push past the uh, float bowl? We'll find out. Stay tuned. So we got our pressure hooked up with a good worm drive style clamp. And then we got our return capped off. Let's see if this thing pops off. I don't know what to think about the uh, bomb explosion announcement beep when you turn the key on. All right. Need some pumpage. We're getting oil pressure. The magic genius lights going off. Why are you not starting? A little tickle. We must not be getting fuel up to that carburetor or it's not getting into there look at that it's got a banjo style fitting with a positive lock that holds the hex from coming loose oh i really don't want to get into this carburetor that's a lot of stuff i probably should cap off these uh vacuum parts that are not capped off already but still should run well, let's take that off. Oh boy. The whole thing wants to turn and I don't think that's good for the seal. Let's do what we know how best. Hope that float's stuck. I always use the right tool for the job. Why did we get one measly pop out of you? Yeah, it's making another trip. Safety first, got the mask on. I think it needs a bigger trailer. All right, we gotta get this fuel line off and then we gotta get this carburetor off and see what's going on inside of it. As much as I don't wanna do that. Great, now I see why putting is the carburetor king because every one of these things needs carb work. Oh my God, how do you even get at those bolts down there? got a sweet glass bowl on it. You can see if you got fuel in there. Very nice. It's nice. As you can see, we're not getting any fuel up in here. And she's a little rusty. Give her a quick blowy. Some needle and seat moving up and down. Yep. So why is there no fuel? Fuel down here. Spray me in the face. Yep. So somewhere between here where the fuel comes in and right here, we're not getting fuel. So let's cut that fuel line off there. We should be able to replace that. Just for good measure. Now let's turn the key on. We better be getting fuel there. Or we got something plugged. Oh, surprise, surprise, something's plugged. So I guess I'm gonna unhook it down there. Shoot some air in there, see what happens. Never seen so much fuel line plugage in my life. So right here is our inlet side, so we should get in a blast of crap coming out right there. Hopefully. Plugged up tight. 
nothing. Let's just take this hose off and put a new hose, bypass it right up to the carbonator. Let's just bypass that chunk up in there. The good part about it is it gets rid of that T for the return, so then we don't even have to worry about capping off the return because we just bypass it. All right, operation fuel inlet line T return bypass complete. Now we should have fuel that's gushing out in there. Pretty bad when I wipe my finger in there and it gets cleaner than when I put it in there. All right, gonna get all kinds of fuel now. Keep an eye right in there. Oh yeah, sweet. So we just gotta wham bam our three hole cover on and get a whole bunch of vacuum plugs. Maybe we'll clean that off a bit too. Try that key to see if we got any leaks. And we do. I was worried about that gasket not seating properly. Yeah, that gasket just don't want to stay where it needs to stay. I still can't get over that this thing has that sweet freaking sight glass on it. So I think before we even try firing it, I'm gonna do a bunch of capping of some vacuum lines. Nine, is that all we need? Weak. I'm guessing this thing's gonna be a giant vacuum leak too, so we'll just stick a bolt or something in there. So we'll just call it an even 10. If you work on this smog garbage and you're deleting it, get yourself one of these vacuum cap assortment kits. OPK12, I think Amazonia or eBay has them. You know what kind of plug you need for that? Spark plug. That's redneck stuff there. Snug that back up where it was. Oh. Looks like we need one more right there. Duff! Where'd you go? Well, Duff's not gonna be here to see this momentous occasion when <laughs> lemon drop here lights right off. be in gear. Oh, now we gotta do the clutch and the brakes. It's freaking good though. <laughs> now that she runs, let's try to get the clutch and brakes. The manual, we don't need the brakes so much, but a clutch would be nice. Also, look at that on the intake. I thought it said 10 watts. No, that's T-O-W. That's tow. She's the tow package. Puddin, he knows what to do. Get these things. Nabco. How do you do? Twist that off, pry it off. Well, it'll probably just turn to dust on us anyway. What holds you on? Bone dry. What are the odds I get any of this in there? Oh crap, hit it first shot. Oh. So there's our master, and your slave is obviously down there. And I was looking at this, and I follow the line over, and it goes to whatever this thing is over here before going down. So I don't know if we try bleeding it there first. 
think that's what we'll do. Probably should start bleeding at the bottom, but we're just going to start up here. Clutches never bleed well for me. We're starting to get some fluid in the reservoir, though. I still got no pedal, so I'm going to go underneath. Bleed her from the bottom, what she should probably be doing anyway. I'm going to go hit the pedal, see what happens. While I do that, you guys can watch this fork, see if it moves. I feel like it ain't moving. Did you guys see it move? I didn't squish the mouse nest if it moved. Let's try this again. Now we'll go push on it and see what happens. Yeah, definitely ain't moving. I got the clutch pedal held down with the uh, brake pedal hood prop assistance rod. So then what? I'm sure this can't be all chewy inside, is it? Looks good. We got a fuel line leak here? Of course we do, because they're all rusty and crappy. Well, I'm not having any luck with that clutch. I tried bleeding it I from underneath, pushing pressure up. I tried cracking lines. I pulled, I even, could you drive any slow? Oh, just doing some creep in there. Sounds like you better grease some bushings. Yeah, you freaking tell them, Duff. Stranger danger. Not even driving a Ranger. What do you think about that guy? Tell him to get out of here. Get out of here. Yeah, I even bench bled the master. And that actually seemed to pump up fine, but I can't get any pressure down there. I pulled on the fork. The fork's moving. I pulled the boot off. The slave looks fine. They're like under 30 bucks of the pair of them, so we're just going to put new ones on and just not deal with it. But... Cause I think it's worth it. Maybe we should do like some type of competition between Puddin and I with our uh, Datsuns. This thing, this thing's gonna stroke him real good. Cause I got the 2.4 and I got eight spark plugs and a five speed. I think we're into him for the same money. Cause he had to buy an engine for his. I just gotta buy a clutch. I think he had to put a clutch in his too. Just got back from lunch. See how she starts. Good. It's good, Doc. Where you been? What do they call it? The blow-off valve on the turbo? That's what those are. We'll tell everyone that. Ka -ka -ka -ka. She just needs a turbo now. Runs way too good for the garbage we got. Did that fuel line quit leaking? Probably not. Good enough. What do you say? Should we set her on the ground? Put the air cleaner back on it? Take her for a rip? Oh, it's it's a motor out of a out of a Z car. Oh yeah. That's right. She's a Z. Datsun. Okay, we'll put it on the ground and try to figure out how to drive without a clutch. You can drive without brakes, not without a clutch. Should probably clean out the back before going hog wild doing donuts. fuel tank could be just sliding around when we're doing donuts. Let's see what we can do here. 
What would Puddin's Fab Shop do? get this thing to drive. I'm thinking we're gonna have to put it in gear and then just crank it over. It starts so good so I think it'll be okay. Duff, you wanna ride with me? Sure, he says. You doing this or what? No, I, I think it'll run. Okay, let's go. I think. Oh, seat's adjusted, right? Well, son of a biscuit, this thing don't run too bad. I think we better clean it off before we go out on our maiden voyage. It's a good one, Puddin'. Better watch out, coming for you. What would Puddin' do? WWPD, you know he'd wash it. Let's pull the dust out of the inside first. Keep clean the inside. We don't go that far. Man, you ought to see this thing. Got her all shined up. What is it? This freaking 720, man. How would you clean her up? Oh, give her the old PPW, the old Puddin's pressure wash. There you go. You're, you're liking that little thing now, huh? Dude, it's a hoot to drive. It's, yeah, they're fun to drive, just just like driving a go-kart. Uh, with, a, with a bed on the back, so you can do all kinds yeah. of truck shenanigans. It's perfect for keeping around for just like, ripping on your place and <laughs> letting the dog sleep in, you know. Perfect, whatever, it does it all. You name it, it does it. <laughs> no! I you're gonna like, end up liking that little thing. How's this thing looked off now that we got her washed up? Not bad. There's still some spots in there where the lichen's really latched into the hood, so I don't know if that'll come out or not. What is that chrome deflector? Is that. OG. I could see the inside got a little wet through this gaping gash in the windshield seal. Windshield is foobard. Clean out the door, but this thing is pretty sharp. Canary yellow when she was new. I don't know how much of that would buff back. Um, the rust definitely didn't get better when we started washing. It's got factory Nissan mud flaps though. It's the deluxe model. And the bed, I don't think was ever, there isn't even hardly a scratch or dent in here. Only thing it hauled was tail. That bracket, that's gonna be good. Hopefully we didn't get a bunch of water in that tank. This side of the box, not any better. Really the only dent, other than on the roof and the bumper, is that cab corner there. Now you can definitely see where they rolled it over. She's a little chewy. Or if they knocked that back out, or they must have. Well, should we go for a rip, Duff? I see no reason not to. Should we go for a ride? Let's do this. Do it. Load up. 
a little start now that we got it wet. Like a time bomb. Here we go. What do you think about that duff? Oh, I can put the wrong clicker in the safety belt. How do I get out of this thing? 
Got it. You want to get out? Yeah, we do. This thing didn't have a cigarette lighter plug in. Cigarette lighter delete. I'm going to keep that. I might need that someday. Any darts? Toothpick? Be a beer cap. Oh, yeah. Blue smoothie. Yeah, I would say that's going to take a little bit more than a tube, Duff. Shoot. If anything was going to stop us from getting home, I wouldn't have guessed it was that tire that was full of water. That one doesn't look much better. Isn't that the one we put the tube in? That one looks like she's pretty flat, too. What a heap. Well, successful first test drive in lemon drop here or whatever we're calling it so i'm gonna put a tire on it you guys let me know what you think we should do with it should we uh drag it down to oklahoma do a little put and pull off against his dotson i mean do we got to put a hitch in the back we got to duel up our rear wheels add some more leaf springs i think we got to put a clutch in it well not a clutch but a we well, might need a clutch, so full of mouse poopies and mouse things. So it needs a slave and a master. But those are on order, because I like this thing. My original plans were to take this motor and tranny, four cylinder, five speed. That was before I knew it had eight spark plugs. And uh, put it into a Model T touring body that we picked up. And uh, just put a little bit newer straight axle in it out of, you know, 32 to 34 Ford and a 8 inch Ford rear end and then you know me and Duff and a couple other buddies can cruise around the car shows if we were ever to go to one but yeah other than that I don't really know what I'm gonna do with this thing so you comment down below if you want to see me drag this down to Oklahoma and show pudding what's up my mad driving fabricating resurrection skills against his or what do you think we should do with this thing I'm not fixing it up but she's too rusty and just no ain't happening maybe maybe you guys want to see the model t thing i was talking about a little touring body with a nissan engine in it all smog deleted and stuff anyway we got a 1984 nissan 720 2.4 liter five speed eight spark plugs back on the road after sitting for 18 years all we had to do was uh fuel tanks leaking so we put a fuel tank in it cleaned out the fuel lines put a new chunk of fuel hose in it and a fuel pump that's about it Fix some tires. We still got to do some more of that. You kids didn't think I was gonna leave you there, did you? Duff's got a surprise for you guys. A poet and didn't even know it. Got the diffy dropped out of Liam Nissan here. And uh, guess what? We're gonna make this thing a two wheel peel. So all you had to do was there's four bolts back here. I'm gonna take the brake line off. Whoop! Slide the axles out. Believe me, they're ginormous. I think they're like 35 spline, maybe even 37. Pretty sure they're strange engineering. And then uh, unhook the drive them shaft, pull out these perimeter bolts, and here is your spider gears. And that's what gives you the one wheel peel. So when your uh, pinion turns, turns your ring gear, which turns your carrier, and uh, that cross pin transfers that to these spider gears. See how they both turn opposite directions? But as it's going, it can freewheel. I don't know how to explain it. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead and put the old Miller locker in here. A lot of guys call them Lincoln lockers, but we got a Miller. The Miller Mender. And we're gonna burn those spider gears together. And that's gonna give us a two wheel peel give us the advantage we need because I feel like there's going to be some drag racing or some towing or something where we're going to need some traction and uh, if we get a flat tire even all that power is going to go to one wheel this way we get power to both sides maybe there'll even be a burnout competition who knows and uh, there'll be twice as much smoke what do you think Duff yeah we got this all right I'm gonna buzz that together Fire up the old Millermatic 200, crank her up to 11. Yeah, 11. Give her all the heat. Here we go. 
You want to clamp your gun so that it don't go through your bearings. So you don't want to ruin the bearings in this nice thing. I think that'll work. Slingshot engage. Oh, there's still a lot of galvanized stuff on there from that 71 Ford. And there you have it. Now, when I turn the pinion, turns the ring gear, all that stuff has to turn because she's all tied together. If you can't weld good, weld a lot. And uh, we welded a lot. Uh-oh, why doesn't it turn there? It scared me for a second, but I think it's just dirt in there. So, here you have it. The poor man posse, right, Duff? Oh, there's our stiff spot again. She's got power through it. There we go. So this thing, she's gonna uh, she's gonna bind around corners at low speed, but hopefully parallel parking in a Kmart parking lot or pulling into Sonic to get one of them foot long chili cheese dogs is not part of this competition because she's gonna bark that inside tire is around the corner. And not the barking that Duff likes. So I'm gonna let this thing cool off a little bit. Clean up down there, put a little right stuff around it because you know we don't want this differential leaking on the shop floor. We might even put some new gear lube in there. I kind of want to put the old stuff back in, but we'll we'll find something newish. Oh, we could use that mystery jug over there that's got all our funnel remnants in there, maybe. But yeah, there you have it. How to make a Lincoln Locker Millermatic Posi. This thing's gonna really hook up and get now, Duff. I'll clean this up, slam that son of a biscuit in there. Well, we got her all slammed back together, didn't we, Duff? Now we just go in there with a razor blade after that uh, silicone dries. Nobody will know any different. We'll probably forget or get too lazy. Let's uh, give these wheels a tune up, though. Are you going to have the honors? Oh yeah, white walls out is good. White letters out, no bueno. I mean, when you're mini truck and you gotta have the white line out. Just ask the master putting himself. I decided if we should put some stripes on this thing or something, class her up a bit. I wish it wasn't all rusty, then we just leave it. But what do you think, Duffers? Have a sandwich. Think about it. Talk me into it. New day. We're back on the uh, Rumble B here and paint should be dry on the wheels and tires. Gotta paint the fronts yet. So I got the front end up. When I was jacking that up, uh, I don't know why things always leak out of my floor drain and under my vehicles, but it smells like fuel. So we're gonna address that. Maybe that's why it was cutting out when we were uh, trying to do donuts. That's what Duff thinks. Winter is coming. The leaves are changing Duff. Ooh, it's hunting season. So. I'm gonna pull those off, paint those, gonna look for a fuel leak. I gotta strap down this fuel cell in the back, you know. We don't want that just flopping all over. If we get an oil filter, we'll change some oil. Ooh, I did get a clutch master cylinder as well, so we'll slam that on there and see if that fixes it. I don't know if it's a slave or the master that the issue is or both. But uh, yeah, new parts. We're getting crazy with this thing. So. Pull some wheels off, start painting. Well, we're 
letting those dry, I think we will shimmy underneath this thing. And it looks like the hard line rusted out. So we're just gonna see what we gotta do. I don't know if we'll run a whole new line all the way up here. That might just be the best deal, but I grabbed a chunk of hard line just in case. But I'd rather just have one splice at the carburetor and going all the way to the back as opposed to steel line, splice on each end, going to steel, with splice on each end, and whatever. It'll be good enough. What do you think, Florida man? Yeah, he approves. So I'm gonna go under there, see if we can't nip it off somewhere, and uh, run some new rubber hose up. So I trimmed off, I don't know, about a foot and a half of steel line down there that looks like it was a culprit. And then I just ran a new line up to the carburetor because we already had a foot and a half up here. So we might as well make it three feet of rubber line. It'll be good enough for who it's for. So we could tie it up. It's not really close to the exhaust or anything, so it'll be fine. Let's uh, turn the key on, see if we got any leaks. I'm sure there's not gonna be any because, you know, it's really well done. These are the good clamps, good gates, 516 holes. What could go wrong? Hear the pump running? I do. I do, I do. Maybe there's no fuel left in it. Who knows? Can we hear the accelerator pump? Let's see if it starts. What's gonna fall into the fan? Nothing. It's not gonna start if I just reach in here, is it? Oh yeah! No leaks! Sweet. Let's get that fuel tank tied in there somehow. And uh, maybe we can kill two birds with one stone. Patch that floor. Seat in this thing is good, huh, Duff? Yeah. Wait. Can we tie that battery in? Or the boat tank in with this somehow? Mmm. Seems risky. Let's see what we can come up with. Use what you got. Red side up or down? I think up. Uh oh. There we go. Run a screw into the uh, door dinger. Fix you. Got it. Real good.
Well, son of a biscuit, you go in there and you push the pedal, it feels like it's got a clutch. So, maybe it was just the master. Don't that thing look sweet? Shiny like a hiney, as the pud man himself says. I wonder if we could do something to like, just bring a black stripe in there where it's all rusty. And then maybe one along the bottom. I don't know. We got a bunch of that hood left out there. We make a hood scoop, kind of like the General Mayhem. Well, this side ain't rusty up top, it's down there. What the heck? I don't know. Boy, those black wheels sure make a difference. Anyhow, let's uh, take this thing for a rip. Let's see if that clutch works. That would be sweet. How come floor jacks are the noisiest thing in the shop to drag around? Riddle me that, Batman. Oh, and we gotta see if it does a two wheel peel, too. Oh yeah, she's definitely a two-wheel peel. Freaking Napa Todd drives his late model. What fun is that, loser? The spokesperson himself for drive your shit. <laughs> Don't drive his shit. Does not drive shit. You're pretty brave parking behind the old Liam Nissan there. That thing might just chuck Norris right through your pickup. Oh, I suppose better shut her down for this live with Landshark. But yeah. Thing rips, it's gonna be good. Should we show them what uh, boom tube was up to for us? Oh yeah, I've never had anything with a tink tink on it. Yeah, some guys call them tractor flaps. They're tink tinks, because they go tink tink. Yeah. Just uh, tied right to the bed rail right there, nice and clean. Took our hole saw, drilled right there. Hole's a little bit big, but whatever. Uh, this is just chunky inch and three quarter pipe. Had Brian flange it out for us. And then down there, just had him bend a 90 with a flange on it to slide on the existing pipe. A couple more clamps. Looks good, don't you think, Duff? Fuel tank's held down. Floor pan's patched. Check the seat belt works. Got our Florida man double strapped in here. Good to go. What do you say we uh, check that tink tink out? No way it's gonna start. Oh yeah, it's real nice. I don't know about you guys, but I think the old Liam Nissan, the Snot Rocket, the Bumblebee, Rumblebee is ready to rock. So we're gonna load this thing up. We're gonna go down to Okihoma and we're gonna kick some bibbed behind down there. What do you guys think? I think we got this. I'm not all about uh, the presentation, the wheels. Painting those was, I don't know, just uh, did it on a whim, I don't know why. I've always kind of wanted a tink tink, so I got that life goal completed now. Hopefully we'll pick up a filter on the way, give her an oil change, and maybe some tune-up parts as well. But yeah, posi, tink tinks, a floor you're not gonna fall out of, a fuel tank that's not gonna fall out, a battery that's not gonna fall out, ready to rip. So, I'm gonna load this thing up. We're gonna get going down the road. Next time I see you guys, we're gonna be carrying some big trophy or Puddin's gonna be crying behind us. I don't know what it'll be, so thanks for sticking around to the end here. Thanks for watching us do Nissan, Datsun, whatever you wanna call it, mini truck things. Check out my other videos. Check out the merch, link in the description. Join the uh, Duff Proof Club if you haven't. There's a lot of behind the scenes stuff and some benefits and links to uh, discounts on the merch as well in there. So if you would, check it out, join, that'd be cool. Duff would appreciate it as well. Remember, it doesn't matter how you get it done, as long as you're having fun. This thing is gonna be way good fun. All of the funds, right Duff? Yeah.